We're back with my family, everyone. And uh, like I said, it's so nice to be together again to continue this tradition. Another tradition is that every year uh, we have dressed up first my son Ash, and then when he was born, my son Ash and Axel and our dog Frisbee as turkeys. Um, this is something we're going to continue to do until they get too old where they don't want to do it anymore? Yeah, about 20, 22. Yeah. <laughs> the dog has never really been into it. No. <laughs> and in fact, keep an eye out for a couple things. One, do you think the dog likes being in this video? <laughs> and two, keep your eye out. If you peel your eyes very closely, there's sort of an Easter egg that maybe you will find. But again, watch very closely. Here are the boys in Frisbee as turkeys. Buggle, 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 then get in. This is uh, uh, 10 weeks ago. Uh, my wife gave birth to a baby girl. And <laughs> would I feel like it's only fitting for you to tell everybody uh, what her name is. Oh my gosh, her name is Adelaide Addie after my mother. Yes. Which, so I knew, knowing Seth and Alexi, it had to start with an A, it had to be a cool name and I know what family means to all of them. So I thought I pretty much had it, but I didn't know, and I didn't want to ask. Yep. And so it waited, you waited until we were on the vineyard, and yep. something was, it was a rainy day, and then you said, do you want to know the name? And I said, I guess so, yes. And then, of course, I burst into tears. You burst into tears. Yep. And now, uh, Dad, had it been a boy, what was the name that you were arguing for? Albert. And... <laughs> Do you want to explain what our hesitation would have been to naming a child Albert? I've had six dogs named Albert. Yeah. Um, I, I currently have Albert the Sixth. Uh, but I thought it would have been a good name because it would have been like, you know, I've had five of my Alberts have died. Um, they had good lives, don't worry. Yeah. Um, but I thought it would be like Pinocchio, you know? And, and all of a sudden, the dog turns into a kid. <laughs> they, they went and screwed it up having a girl. Yeah. I, um, I do, I, I, I only, I, you know, I'm so happy to have a girl. Um, it was a, a dream come true uh, to have a girl. But I only wish it had been a boy just uh, for you to explain to my wife. <laughs> it's like the dog came back as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't, I, it, it could have gone better than we all think. <laughs> now, um, Addie had a drink of choice. Posh, do you remember what Addie drank? A uh, uh, Kier Royale. Yes, this is uh, not the baby Addie, uh, but the dear, the dear departed Addie. And so um, I would like to take a toast in memory of uh, our grandmother and um, mother. your mother. And uh, dad, your arch nemesis. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Addie. And if I could just interject something about Kiers. Now, it's white wine with creme de cassis. Yep. The Royale is with uh, champagne as well. But my mother would had a flask that she carried with her at all times that had the creme de cassis because she says it's such a ripoff when you go to restaurants. So a regular glass of white wine is maybe $6. Then they jack it up to 10 right. just by putting in the creme de cassis. And yeah. she says, half the time, it's too red. It's not red enough. She says, I'm just going to do my own. So she always took along this flask yes. and would pour it. <laughs> now, the thing is, with creme de cassis, it's like a real gooey yep. red. Very like thick. Very thick. Yeah. So we, one time, the, the thing broke. The lid came off. We were in a store shopping. And I looked down, and it was like one of those straw uh, rugs. Uh -huh. And there was creme de... It looked like somebody had been, had been murdered. Yeah. <laughs> and there was, there was just red all the way. And I looked at Mother, and she said, we need to leave right now. Yeah. <laughs> so we got out. Yeah. We there, got out. The point of that story is she didn't only carry that flask when she went shopping. Yeah. <laughs> or to the restaurant. It's very funny Always to think that. of... Um, uh, carrying a flask full of creme de cassis. She was a yes. very refined dirtbag. Oh, yes. Yeah. Wait a minute. 
<laughs> but it's very funny about um, I, Addie, uh, first of all, here uh, I do want to show how beautiful uh, my grandmother was. There she is uh, on her wedding day in the middle. Um, here she is uh, right there. And that's you right there, Mom? Yeah, that's, that's with a... five of her six children. Yep, you that had was... one more baby after you. One more baby after you. And uh, Addie uh, was so refined and so classy, and her home was filled with uh, beautiful antiques. I assumed until I was about 15 years old that I just assumed she was born in England. Right. And yeah. you want to tell everybody where she was born? Kansas City, Missouri. Yeah. But she was sent to an English boarding school. Yes, she went she to Malvern Girls College in England. Uh -huh. And she did. She would pronounce laboratory and things like She had airs. Yeah, she yeah. put on airs. Now, and you, <laughs> late in life, because she, she spent her later years in San Diego, you were in LA. You saw her a great deal more than I did. You were very close with her. But do you have a memory of, because she wasn't the warmest grandmother when we were young. No, she, does, she didn't like kids that weren't her kids. Yeah. And I was her grandchild. Right, which you feel like is close <laughs> enough. Not for Addie. Yeah. No. Um, no. And yeah, but she was like, you know, she would never say paper mache, she would say papier mache. Right. Um, um, and then she'd thing. like. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and then have a nice thick drink of cassis. <laughs> yeah. But she, uh, I mean, my favorite story, she was. You know, our grandmother, she was like 83, had gone through a couple husbands and had gone out on a date with this guy. And he was also getting on in years and he was dropping her off. And he asked her something. I forget how he phrased it. What did he ask her? Would you touch it? <laughs> Would you touch it? She did not. She did not. <laughs> But that gentleman would die three months later and leave his house to his uh, housekeeper. And uh, everyone was like, well, if you would have touched it, <laughs> maybe free house. It was a very loving group of people. How, is, um, how did your, uh, what is your memory of Addie? It was different for me. <laughs> uh, I'll have to tell you the first time I met Addie, Hillary and I met in college, and I, I must have been about 20, and my friend Denny Miller and I went up, from, we lived in Pittsburgh, we went up to Marblehead, Massachusetts, this beautiful New England town with a big uh, harbor full of sailboats, uh, and they lived in a house that was built in the 1600s, and we come up there and, uh, you know, the thing at, at the end of the summer, a little vacation, and uh, so I think we got off to a bad start. Um, you know, first of all, we mentioned, she said, how do you like Marblehead? We said, yeah, yeah no rivers, no bridges. It's not Pittsburgh. Yeah, it's all right. So then um, we were sitting in the yard and- uh, The garden. It was the garden, pardon yeah. me. If you, uh, if you say papier mache. You say garden. You say garden, you yeah. You say garden. And, and I'll admit, we're 20 years old. I mean, I don't know what she was expecting. She wasn't expecting me. Uh, and, um, we, you know, as far as Savoir Faire went to stay with the French, ours was only fair. Mm. And uh, so we're sitting in the garden, and, and Hillary's grandfather came in, uh, Addie's father. He was quite old at the time, and with a beret and some medals from World War I. And uh, he sat down, we shook his hand, but we didn't get up. We should have got up. We, we were, you know, again, fair on the Savoir Faire. And uh, so, after we had that little exchange, we went in to change for dinner, and Hillary came up and said, you have to get out. Addie threw me out the first day. I mean, yeah. it didn't make it one day. She, <laughs> she threw us out. And, and you saw the picture of her with her five of her six children, and she was the matriarch. She was, I would say she was like Catherine the Great, except Catherine the Great didn't have six kids. She was more like that guy, uh, what's his name on succession, Roy? Logan Roy? Logan Roy. Yeah. She was more like him. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, with a lo yeah. lot of kids. He's very, he's a loving, he's yeah, a loving, yeah, yeah. yeah. So she was, she was the boss. But we, you know, we, that was a rough start. But, you know, Hillary and I have been married over, over 50 years. And, and so over time, you know, maybe 10, 12 years, things got better. And, uh, yeah. you know, the last 30 years were, were pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I should note, the story about Addie's birth was a lot less dramatic than Axel, who was uh, my middle son, who was famously born in a lobby. And uh, you know, our first son was almost born in an Uber, so uh, Alexi was very aware that she has pretty fast labors, and so uh, she decided to have it at home. 
uh, with a midwife. And uh, my wife is very, uh, she is an alpha. She likes to plan things. Uh, she put our two boys to bed. She looked at me. She said, my water broke. We had a midwife come to our home, and she gave birth in our bathtub uh, at 10.30 at night, uh, which was incredible. Like, three pushes, and baby Addie was there. And it was amazing because, you know, you go to a hospital, which we did for the first two, and, you know, it feels very medical. And this birth was very much, uh, just felt like a miracle. And we had uh, Addie slept between us at night in bed. And then when the boys woke up in the morning, I got to go into their room and say, there's a surprise for you in mom's bed. And uh, here's the video of uh, the first time they got to hold their sister. Mommy, get her off, get her off. Take her off? Mommy! What? What is that? That's her belly button. <laughs> <laughs> we took advantage of the pandemic and the fact that you weren't, you know, people weren't seeing you out and about in the same way. And we decided, uh, it's not really exciting. Like, I feel like a secret baby, you know, has to be like, two people that aren't together. Yeah, it's a little bit less exciting when you're like, we had a secret baby, and people are like, it's your third baby. It's not a... <laughs> no, that, look, trust, that's how I feel. And yeah. I don't know why I've been keeping it a secret. Right. Well, I appreciate you biting the bullet. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, you know, uh, e e you know, obviously, uh, um, the, the fact that uh, this one wasn't born in the lobby, you know, didn't, didn't need to run out and tell everybody, you know? Yeah, yeah fair enough, fair yeah. enough. No Netflix special there. No. <laughs> <laughs> Boy. I mean, it's heartbreaking. And you know, you don't want to blame her because she's just a baby. Yeah. But, 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 you know, Axel's already paid for college. Like, <laughs> oh, she's got some work to do, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, hey, we're going to go to commercial, but uh, I'm going to show you, uh, we're going to go to commercial uh, with a video. Uh, that is uh, one that I have watched a uh, hundred times uh, since we filled it. This is um, Axel. Um, both my boys are incredibly sweet. This is Axel. We lower thirded it because he's a little hard to understand sometimes, but his, this is his first conversation with his baby sister. Sleep, sleep, daddy. Baby sister, do you like me? 